I want to make a narrative, but in order to make a narrative, I need to have a script. And in order to have a script, I need to have an idea. And I don't have any ideas. Prepare to die, you cowardly carrot. <laughs> So these are my top 10 strategies on finding an idea. People watching. I put this as 10 just because I don't actually people watch very often or at least not intentionally so. This is when I've actually intentionally tried to people watch and like sit on a park bench or in a mall and watch people and take notes. I feel like a creep. <laughs> But I did realize working on characters for different acting roles, I actually am drawing uh, significantly from behaviors and mannerisms and personality traits from different people that I have observed in my life. An activity. So actually a lot of different places suggested a lot of different kind of activities. Make a list of all your favorite activities and choose a few and do them. Exploring a new hobby or learning something new. I'm trying to learn Korean. The part that I'm playing right now in this play has some Yiddish words so I started doing the Yiddish Duolingo, doing something that I've never done before. I just went morel hunting. I might be saying that wrong, but it's the mushrooms. Do something that scares you or out of your comfort zone. Pinterest. I went on Pinterest and I clicked on lots of things that I thought were interesting or pretty or cool or whatever. But I found this was not really that helpful for me. I kept getting very distracted by other interests that were unrelated to what I'm trying to do. Things I want to decorate with or things I want to buy or hairstyles I want to try. I think that it could help me after I have the idea. Give yourself a prompt. At first I thought this was going to be very low on my list because I was like, how do I give myself a prompt? I'm trying to come up with ideas. I've got no idea. So what idea am I going to give myself to come up with an idea? But actually, right before I started filming this right now, I was like, well, I need to do the things that I'm suggesting. So I think one time I said something about a squishing grapes with your toes or something like that. So that's my prompt. I'm just going to see what comes. And actually, <laughs> I came up with a whole superhero plot. Maybe I'll wind up using it. I don't know. It really does get me to just start writing because one of the most intimidating things is the blank page. And this also took all the pressure off because I was like, I just need to write something just as like, even just to say that it failed. Number six, talking to people. You know, they have interests that you don't have. So when you get to learn about those, sometimes that triggers things or it makes, inspires you to go look things up. They might have ideas that build on your idea. So great way. Number five is an exercise that I read about in a book. Choose one of the seven deadly sins and just for two minutes, write all the things you can think of where you have personally struggled with or dealt with that particular deadly sin. Because of the two minute time limit, I felt really rushed. I think that did work better for me when I didn't give myself a time limit when I just let myself freely think. Similarly, someone else mentioned that you should just write down a list of all the things you could rant about for two hours. Walk in nature. Walking in nature, of course, is good for your soul. It's good for your body, for your emotional health, for everything, I think. Wouldn't say necessarily that I get an inspiration from it um, on a regular basis. However, what I have found is that exploring in general does give me inspiration because the location often gives me inspiration. I think a vampire lives here. This is a fairy land. Ooh, this, this is where this story takes place. Watch, look at art. Plays, musicals, concerts, TV, movies. I was a little skeptical about how much inspiration I would get from a museum, but actually I wrote down four ideas in my cell phone just based on things that certain paintings made me think about. Journaling. I didn't do the journaling specifically for this video, but I journal on a regular basis. And so I went back and read a bunch of my old journals. And surprisingly, there were a lot of things in there because they're they're past ideas that I've had that were interesting to me, that are still interesting to me. It also reminded me of when I used to keep a dream journal. I tried this briefly, but the problem is, is that you have to wake up like really quickly after your dream, which is really tough for me. And then um, you have to write about it and then you have to decipher your writing later. My number one way to find inspiration is reading. And I'm lumping this in with podcast, audiobook, one of my favorite things to do and definitely one of the best ways for me to find inspiration is I like to go to a bookstore with a cafe because I love chocolate and I like to get 
several books that I find interesting for whatever reason of different topics and sit in the cafe and have my coffee and cookie and browse through them. If all else fails, I did discover something really great on the internet. This is a automatic plot generator and it'll make a screenplay for you. And I was extremely distracted and entertained by this. I mean, I am running away, but I'll be back with candlesticks. We've been searching for ages. I really don't think they're here. Suddenly, Will appears holding a pair of candlesticks. Looking for something? Crikey, Rob, here's your candlesticks. Tell me something I don't already know. The Earth's circumference at the equator is about 40,075 kilometers. I know that already. I pickle my earwax and keep it in a jar under my bed. Rob lunges forward, grabs his deadly candlesticks. He wields them triumphantly. Prepare to die, you cowardly carrot! No, please! All I did was prod a bunch of babies. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't use these candlesticks on you right away. Because, Rob, I am your father. Rob looks stunned for a few moments and then collects himself. No, you're not! Well, it had to be worth a try. Will gra tries to grab the candlesticks, but Rob dodges out of the way. Who's the daddy now, huh? <laughs> Owen of the babies passes Rob a healing bell. I think they want you to have it as a symbol of their gratitude. I couldn't possibly. Pause. Well, if you insist. The two walk off arm in arm. Suddenly, Warwick stops. When I said I pickle my earwax and keep it in a jar under my bed, you know I was just trying to distract the robber, don't you? So that's kind of fantastic. Pages and pages of ideas. So I'm going to pick one and write it. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more content from Ground Up Skill Grabbing. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Psalm 139, 14. See you next week.